Hey coaches, Jeff here with USA Volleyball. Today we're gonna to go through my top 10 tips and tricks to get better at coding data volley faster. Tip number one, you've got to learn how to touch type. If you can't type without looking down at your keyboard, inevitably you're gonna miss some of the action and be slower at inputting the data. The slower you are, the less information you can capture. Tip number two, reconfigure your keyboard. You don't have to be stuck with what Data Volley gives you as a default. Think about how you can reorganize your keyboard to make just a little bit more sense. For me, I like to code my action codes with my left hand and my grades with my right hand. Additionally, I want to minimize as much distance my fingers have to travel, so I try and keep my most commonly used keys on the home row. Tip number three, practice, practice, practice. It's tedious, it can be boring, but you've got to make sure you're putting in the time that's necessary to get your skills where they need to be. Tip number four, learn to compound code as soon as you possibly can. The sooner you can do this, the less keystrokes you're gonna have to use. The less keystrokes you use, the faster you code. The faster you code, the more information you can gather. What is compound coding? Let's take a look. Using basic coding, you normally designate whether the action was performed by the home or away team, the number of the athlete performing the action, what the action was, and then the resulting grade of that action. Each code is separated by a space. This requires a ton of keystrokes to capture all the data. By compound coding, we can link a number of these actions together using a period rather than hitting the space bar between each action. By using the period, Data Volley will then auto populate the subsequent action for you. By default, Data Volley will assume that the action after a serve is a receive and after the attack is a block. You can change these defaults if desired. Additionally, Data Volley will also help you grade the linked actions, saving you keystrokes. In the example rally shown on your screen, it would normally take about 33 keystrokes using basic coding. By using compound coding, you can shrink this down to 22 total keystrokes. This can help you increase your speed, increase your accuracy, and give you time to include even more information using extended code. Tip five, use attack combinations that are easy to remember. You don't have to be stuck with what Data Wallet gives you when you first start out. For example, what I like to do for all my pin attacks is start my attack combination with the letter P and subsequently the second letter of the combination designates what set type it is. So, if it's a go, it's a P, G. Feel free to come up with your own. You're not stuck with what I do, you're not stuck with what Data Volley gives you. A lot of people use a lot of different attack combinations. Tip number six, practice. I can't stress this enough. You've got to practice as much as you possibly can. Ideally live, but if you don't have that opportunity, video is okay too. A tip for practicing off a of video? Don't do it in slow motion. Just ride the struggle bus as much as you possibly can because you've got to get up to speed. If you can only code in slow motion on video, how can you expect to be fast and accurate when the match is actually going on? Tip number seven, disable smart time. This is a tool that Data Volley introduced to give a default amount of time between certain contacts, specifically the serve and each subsequent attack. Your job when coding is to try and get the most accurate information possible, but additionally, we want to have that be able to sync accurately to the action that's going on on the floor. This makes video review that much easier for the coaching staff. By having smart time enabled, this will only have a default amount of time between contacts and very rarely will it relate to exactly what's going on in the match. Tip number eight, avoid using little stickers on your keyboard. All this does is give you an excuse to look down at your keys. And we've already discussed this, the more you look down at the keyboard, the less action you're seeing on the floor. And the less action we see on the floor, the less we can actually capture. Tip nine, practice. Seriously, 
you can go through and as you're practicing, periodically go back and check the accuracy of your work. If you're using video, this is pretty easy. Practice for a set. Go back and check your accuracy. Keep a log of your percentage accuracy rate. And every once in a while, go back and check how accurate your sync is to the video. It's okay to use the same video when you're practicing time and time again. That's how I started, and that's how I made sure that I could have my accuracy level as high as I possibly wanted. Tip number 10. Don't try and learn how to code everything all at once. This can get really overwhelming. I would suggest learning an order of priority. Priority number one. I would learn how to code all serves, receptions, and first ball attacks as soon as you possibly can. This gives you the ability to have rotation tape, which allows you to scout first ball offense of another team or yourself. Level number two. In addition to all serves, receives, and first ball attacks, let's capture all attacks and rally ending actions like block stuffs and dig errors. As you become more accurate coding levels one and two, you can start to add more information as you go along. I hope some of these tips were helpful to you. For more tips and tricks and a full walkthrough of how to data volley from start to finish, you can go to scoutvb.com.